I think it was my way of, you know, processing information, and I've always been doing it. And it's my favorite activity since I was probably 17. You know, I mean, I would paint, you know, 16 hours a day, five, six days a week. There's really no one painting. You know, it's from across the room, you see one thing, and then as you go, each distance, you have to keep on making it interesting for the viewer so you get so up close, and then you're just looking at little tiny worlds within worlds. You know, every morning I want to draw, I want to look. I, you know, it's, in, in that sense, it's, it's rhythmical, which is a side of religion. You know, you do it religiously, like every day. And then there's also the focus side of it, which is like meditation. And, you know, the, the paintings can be like visual trances. And it is a psychedelic experience that I'm sort of going for. I'm interested in a, a durational experience with painting. So a painting you can keep looking at over days, over your whole life and keep seeing new things. The painting techniques incorporate a lot of different styles. There's woodworking, so you can't always tell how something is made. And sometimes it's illusionistic, sometimes it's real, sometimes it's carved, sometimes it's paint. So you, it's always like keeping the viewer kind of questioning what they're looking at exactly. It's sort of put together like a dream, kind of like automatic writing but automatic drawing. So it's kind of like my morning ritual in the studio is just to draw for an hour or two hours, just because it sensitizes you to space and the touch of the pen and the paper and the whole thing. So it's just, it's like a sensitizing, like making scales as a musician or something. It's like a warm up exercise. And then from that, I just draw whatever comes into my mind, usually, so, and I sort of piece it together, and then eventually these narratives start forming between things. And it's sort of like a poem, and you could go from one thing to another in any direction. I'm letting the viewer kind of make their own narrative. I mean, when I'm really into it, I'm, I'm totally surprised, and I can't believe the stuff that's coming out. So that's, that's kind of the, mo the most of mine where I'm drawing, I literally don't even know what's gonna come out, what my hand is doing almost. So it's like a s subconscious, almost therapeutic experience. I mean, I suppose it's to break away from traditional limiting forms of thought, to create new you know, juxtapositions of thinking. I'm making an experience not so much an object, and that's what's important. And yet the irony is that all I'm doing is making an object, and that's all I have to work with is the material. So I'm like using this most base material, but you can turn that material into this illusionistic, incredible world where really anything is possible. And that's kind of the beauty of painting, the illusionism and the irony and that you can create anything that you can imagine, you can basically paint. And that's not true about other mediums. The vision is more primordial and more fundamental in the sense of scale and light and color and density. So I sort of can see like what I think could be like a magnificent idea or some really special idea, and I'll just sort of feel my way to that. But then other times, I'll start with nothing, just like spray paint. A lot of these big paintings are like that, where I have no idea and I'll just let the, the light kind of suggest a form and I'll just let it develop like totally organically. So I have both sides of my work, you know, where it's like really mathematical and composed and I'm using, you know, the Fibonacci sequence or algorithms, there's calendar systems. So there's a lot of like mathematical systems that then have to work with the very like intuitive painting. The artwork behind me was begun when I saw a three-dimensional mapping of a cave where these early human remains were found. And the depth of the cave sort of corresponded to these striations in time. And so I used that mapping to create a form that looked like kind of a philosopher's stone mountain. And then each striation 
was like the evolution of consciousness. So it started with, you know, fish becoming men, and then the next stage was, you know, the opening up of consciousness. You had apes with crosses and ma magic psychedelic mushrooms. Then you had figures coming together and cooperation and union. Then you had culture building, countries, education. And then it gets to like the 20th century where there's almost like an apocalyptic state and it's the World Trade Center and it's electricity and flip phones. And then it kind of explodes into just the universe, kind of backwards started. And so that evolution of stages going up was kind of like the idea that triggered the artwork.